Hey, this is the game, Triple H. Um, trying out some new technology here, Facebook Live. Um, you can see I'm in my office. Giant logo proves it. Um, just trying something out now. Uh, you know, this is brand new. In uh, WWE, we love to be on the cutting edge of technology and kind of at the forefront of all of this stuff. As you know, if you're a fan, um, WWE is probably one of the most social, most socially engaging products out there um, for a lot of our our WWE universe, for our fan base. WWE is kind of a lifestyle, so to speak. It's um, you know it's something that you're you're very immersed in and all in. You really connect with the uh, the characters and and the superstars. And um, really sort of at its heart, you can't get enough. And I think we equate to social media so well in that sense. And um, I think this is no different. And it's us trying to always find new ways to connect with our fans, to um, be allowed, you know, for, for you to be allowed to give us your opinions and your your feedback and, and um, just, uh, just be connected, you know, because the WWE is... It's sort of like one big family, so to speak, I think. And, and that's the coolest part of what we do. So this being new, um, there's really no kind of guidelines on this. I just thought I'd I'd uh, I'd try it out and say, hey, for a minute, maybe take a couple of questions. There's a lot of things on the horizon right now in uh, a little over two weeks. We've got a very exciting week. SummerSlam is coming up. And, and uh, for the first time ever, uh, SummerSlam is going to be a four-hour extravaganza this year anchored by uh the undertaker and brock lesnar and probably one of the most um you know the word epic is used too much but uh, the biggest um the biggest return matches in history um i think it's it's going to be a monumental night four hours only on the wwe network and i think that's uh gonna be something that's huge but it's also an awesome night you know the wwe is going to come into brooklyn to the barclay center and really just kind of take over with SummerSlam on sunday saturday night nxt uh will go in there to barclay center and put on nxt takeover brooklyn and you know, that's quite a, an undertaking for NXT as the brand continues to evolve and become bigger and bigger. Um, we're moving into, you know, for the first time, um, an arena the size of the Barclays Center, unsure of what we would have. And, um, you know, we are basically at this point as close to sold out as can be. We have uh, and for anybody that's still interested, there are some tickets still available as we continue to open up seats um, that we had closed out for production, but um, there's very few. They're still good seats because they were closed for production, but uh, you should should keep your eye out and look on the site because there are tickets available for NXT TakeOver in Brooklyn. But it will be sold out, and it will be packed, and it will be monstrous. Um, and again, on Saturday Night Live, only on the WWE Network if you're not there in person. Um, and that's the place to be to see it. And then going back into the Barclays Center again with Monday Night Raw on Monday. Um, not too many uh, entertainment entities right now could sell out Brooklyn three nights back to back. But the WWE is going to. Um, NXT TakeOver for me, I'll talk about that because it's, it's near and dear to my heart. It's going to be an awesome night. Finn Balor versus Kevin Owens. Um, in uh, in what is another unbelievable rematch coming off of an incredible, incredible match that they had in Tokyo, Japan, where Finn Balor took the NXT title from Kevin Owens. Um, this rematch is going to be huge. I personally can't wait to see it. Um, you know, right now there's an, a lot of excitement going on with uh, a sort of a divas revolution with the women in our business that I like to uh, think NXT is in a, in a large way responsible for. But um, on that night, you're going to get to see Sasha Banks go one-on-one -on -one with Bayley for the NXT women's title. And um, 
you know, I can tell you for me personally how excited I'll be to watch that match. I think when you talk about NXT, you talk about the women and, and boy, it's, it's really, um, it's it's arguable that they don't steal the show every time they're out there, and I think that uh, it's it's going to be an an awesome night between the Bailey Sasha match and the Finn Balor uh, Kevin Owens match uh, back to back. I think that's just going to be incredible. But you know you'll have a lot of other talent there as well. Samoa Joe will be there. Um, Baron Corbin will be there. Tyler Breeze taking on the Japanese legend of Jushin Thunder Liger, um, which has brought a lot of questions um, and and a lot of excitement to the NXT brand. It's going to be an amazing night all the way around. So, um, you know what? At this point, I'm uh, I'm I'm just gonna I'm gonna take some questions here and and see what we got. And I'm I'm looking at questions as they come up on this. Um, most of them are statements. Let me see if I can find one here that's good. Um, now, I, I'm pretty sure the one, Amaze Balls, I don't even know what that means. Um, look at his shoulders. It's a small screen. I mean, they look good. Look, here, while, we're, while these guys are, I have some people in here with me, uh, and they're, they're going to look through here and, and find a couple of really good questions for me. Well, but I, I'm going to take a second. I'm going to pick this up and I'm going to just quickly, uh, show you a couple of things in my office that I think are really cool. I think as a lot of people know, I'm real big into the history of, of what we do in the WWE in general. And, um, I kind of feel like you can't know where you're going if you don't know where you've been. So one of the things that, that I have in my office is a championship display case. And if you kind of look behind me, well, it's a little bit tough because of the reflection from the windows, even though I have screens down. But I have a display where um, you can see the WWE championships in their history. This is the first ever WWF championship that was uh, held by Buddy Rogers and was won by Bruno San Martino. And then it kind of goes down the line from the belt that then Bruno had to kind of the backland superstar Billy Graham era, the the round green belt Hogan had, winged eagle, which is a lot of people's favorites. Um, to if you go the other side now, look here's a sneak peek you don't get to see every day. Look at this. Here's the the this is Orlando, Florida. This is the monitor in my office. Yep, that's Chris Jericho in there trying to tell uh, divas what to do. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and then if you go over here, yeah, the next lineage of WWE championship belts. So I'm real big in the history of it, and I like to keep those just kind of in my office as a display, and it constantly just reminds me of the history of of where we've been and and uh, where we're going. So. Um, hey, where did you guys go with the questions? They, they all ran out of here because they thought I was going to try to rib them and turn the camera on them really fast so you could see them all scrambling around uh, trying to get... Um, let's see, here's a question Jonas C. asked. Uh, what do you think about Tough Enough? Do I think any of the contestants can actually make it in NXT or WWE? Um, it's hard to say at this point, you know, the one thing that you that you do with Tough Enough is there's a lot of factors that they're looking for and who the person is as to whether or not they get a shot at even making it to the Performance Center. Um, but once you get there, you know, like Tough Enough, it's, it's a little bit misleading because are you tough enough to make it in the door? Um, but being tough enough to make it in the door and tough enough to make it are two totally different things. Are there people with potential on there? Absolutely. Um, I think there are people on there that were on there with potential that are no longer on there. Um, so I think um, I think there's always potential. And it's funny, sometimes the person that you think won't make it ends up becoming the biggest superstar. Um, and that's always cool too. So I think a lot of those guys do, and if they've, guys and girls, and if they've been uh, eliminated at this point, I would just say to them, if this is your dream, if this is truly what you want to do, then you'll find a way to make it here no matter what. Don't let anybody... Uh, tell you no or a contest tell you no um, 
just means you won't win the 250K, which is, you know, look, if you make it as a WWE superstar, that won't matter anyway. So uh, let's find another question here. Um, will we see Ronda Rousey in a WWE ring anytime soon? Um, wow, that's a pretty good one. Um, you know, listen, I think a lot of things uh, depend on whether that happens or not. There's a lot, there's a lot of factors involved there. Um, I, I think she loves what we do. I think uh, we obviously are huge fans of hers. Um, I think that the opportunity is there if she wants it to be. And it's just going to depend on uh, what can be made to happen. She is being pulled in a million different directions, I can only imagine. She is the hottest property in all of sports right now, um, and maybe in the world. And um, and that's uh, she got a lot of choices in front of her. So uh, one way or the other, I would just say congratulations to Ronda on the success. Congratulations on an, another unbelievable fight. Um, I I can't think of a, a better and nicer person for all the great things that are happening uh, for her. I can't think of a better person for them to happen to. And uh, the one thing about the WWE is, will Ronda ever be here? Never say never. Uh, let's see. Um, is NXT, Michael P. asks, is NXT going to travel full-time around the U.S.? What about internationally? So we're working on that. You know, um, right now we're kind of in the process of seeing what uh, what NXT can do and, and where it can go and what's the best way to go there. You know, we have a lot of things on the table right now, a lot of exciting things, you know, in, in the next um, month or two. Obviously, Brooklyn... Um, you know, if you go back a, a year, two years, would anybody have dreamed that um, NXT at that time would have been able to come in and sell out the Barclays Center? Um, you know, I don't think anybody would have saw that. Um, but we're we're starting to tour now. We're going to 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 more and more places. We just announced a tour of Texas coming up on September 17, 18, and 19. That's Houston, Austin, and San Antonio. Um, we have in, um, I'm, I'm looking at a calendar in front of me on the other side of my room in my office. Um, we have, uh, some music festival shows in October that we are doing in, uh, Sacramento, California and in Louisville, Kentucky. We have, uh, that's, that, that's the Aftershock tour. Um, we also have, um, some potential being looked at UK dates coming up. Um, we're looking at everything and um, anywhere where there's a demand uh, for NXT, we're willing to go to. And I think that as fans, if you, if you, uh, if you tell us uh, where you want us to come, we will try to get there and see it uh, or, and let you see it. I mean, and um, that's the exciting thing about the brand. We can, we can do just about anything right now. We kind of got a blank, blank slate as to what we want to do. Um, let me see. Oh, look, Kara Diaz, who has a bigger office, you or Steph? Well, you know, Kara, size isn't everything. You know, it's not about the size of your office. It's what you do with it. And yeah, some people have huge offices, but they don't know how to use them. And nobody's really satisfied with what comes out of the office. You know what I'm saying? It's it's all uh, it's all just a you know, it's just image at that point in time. It's really where you brag about big offices, and it's just ridiculous. If my office was small, it would wouldn't matter. It's all what I do with it. But if you have to know, my office is gigantic. So, uh, anyways, let's take another question. Uh, how do I jiggle being an executive and a superstar? <laughs> it says juggle, but the people in my office now are freaking out because they think they wrote down jiggle, but it says juggle. Um, it's hard. Uh, I'll tell you what's hard. Uh, juggling being an executive, a talent, uh, a dad, all those things are hard, just like it's hard for everybody else in the world. How do you uh, juggle work and, and all the things? And it's just time management and... Um, 
just doing what you got to do, you know. Uh, you just you just buckle down, you do the work. Um, we lose sleep a lot. I don't sleep much, but uh, you know what? It's uh, it's all worth it because this is a lot of fun and and creating opportunities and entertainment that um, that the WWE universe love. Uh, trying to create new talent and new brands and and all those things and and we have a saying in WWE that we put smiles on people's faces it's not just a saying it's not just a a phrase that we use it really is what we do at the end of the day I don't know if anybody got to see the the video of my friend Elijah who came on uh Monday night in San Jose if you haven't seen it go look at it it's pretty cool and his his uh he's a little uh, a little guy that um, has been battling cancer for a long time he sent in a video to, to try to be a part of Tough Enough and in my eyes he's tougher than anybody I know so uh, we brought him to Raw and we got him in the ring and he signed his honorary WWE contract and became Drax Shadow uh, had his own catchphrases and everything and um, you know to see the smile on his face to see the smile in his parents' face, to see the smile on uh, everybody's face in San Jose was awesome. And that's, at the end of the day, really why we do what we do. So um, anyway, hey, this has been fun, but probably Vince is going to come in here any second and ask me why I'm goofing off and not doing some actual work. Uh, so I probably should go. Um, I'm, I'm excited because this is a brand new technology and at the top of the screen, if I move my giant head to the side, uh, it says 38,000 followers right now are, are watching this stream live, which it started out when I first looked up, it said nine, which the nine was kind of not really that impressive. But now, like brand new, 38,000. I think I'm one of the first people to do this. Uh, so it's really cool. Thanks for uh, coming on here and uh, on Facebook Live and checking this out. Um, I think this is going to be a lot of fun. I'd love to do this again. I'd love to do this more. I'd love to be able to uh, to do some Q&As. And uh, i got to get better at reading the questions while it's, you know, it kind of goes fast. Um, and... Uh, but, uh, but this was fun, and I enjoyed it, and um, hopefully we can do it again down the line. Maybe I'll break some crazy news or, like, uh, you know, something that will break the Internet. I'll launch it on here. And uh, so all of you, if there, I don't know how this even works, like if there's a way to follow me or whatever. But if there is, follow me, because I have, like, 11 million people follow me on Facebook. So if you're one of those 11 million people, awesome. And if you're not, then get on board. Um, and, and check this out. It's pretty cool. I enjoyed it. Thanks a lot. See you later.